1994, Spider-Man was at the height of his popularity. He had his own brand new animated series on Fox Kids. The Clone Saga was just kicking off in comic books. He had several comic book titles. The Amazing Spider-Man, The Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker Spider-Man. He had his own magazine and he had his own magazine. This is a six issue comic series for lack of a better term. Uh, there were several stories in each issue and it ran from October 1994 until March 1995. Here we have issues two through five and we're going to be taking a look at them today. Welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon and as you can see here, these are issues two through five of Spider-Man Magazine from 1994 and 95. During the original run, I managed to come across these at a local pharmacy. Uh, I ended up getting issues number four and five originally and wasn't sure at the time how many issues they actually made of this. Uh, but doing some research, turns out they've only made six issues of this. I haven't been able to find a whole lot of information on these because anytime you type in Spider-Man magazine, it naturally wants to change it to magazine with an A instead of an E. But they are really cool nonetheless. As you can see, number four, which was the first one I had, is Spider-Man going up against the original X-Men team. Number five, Spider-Man against the Scorpion. Spider-Man against the Juggernaut, Morbius, and Sandman. And then Spider-Man and the Black Cat. So let's go ahead and open these up and take a look at the issues and go over them in depth. So first we have Spider-Man Magazine number two from November of 1994. In this issue, the black cat prowls the night. Spidey and the high-flying human torch take on the frightful four. The maniacal green goblin strikes again. As you can see there, the black cat is trying to seduce Spider-Man with a pipe wrench behind her back. Uh, and Spider-Man's spider sense is tingling. And as you can see, the Comics Code Authority was still in use at that time. Uh, Marvel Comics, 96 big pages. And on the inside of the front cover, we have an ad for Disney's Gargoyles. Stopping Evil Stone Cold comic o coming October 24th. Gargoyles, check your local television listings for time and channel. And I know I've said this before, but I did really enjoy the 90s art style of Spider-Man. Uh, however, this does appear to be a reprint of an earlier comic. As you can see, it's done in more the Steve Ditko style, more blocky, bulky style. Let's see, what's it say here? Um... Copyright in 1964, 1972, 1982, 1994. Um, it does not say reprint, but I'm willing to bet the original comic was The Amazing Spider-Man, but the cat came back. In fact, let me go ahead and check that out real quick. So this issue is a reprint of a March 1982 storyline. Uh, but the cat came back uh, in the issue of The Amazing Spider-Man number 226. And, uh, you know, I'm not really, I wasn't really fond of the 60s through the 80s style of art. I'm not a big, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from fans. I mean, I can appreciate the art style, but I'm not really a big uh, Ditko fan or any of the other uh, Kirby fan. I, I can appreciate uh, their artistic capabilities, but I'm not a huge fan of their art styles. I grew up in the 90s, and so I, I was raised on the styles of Jim Lee and the artists of the 90s who did the Spider-Man comics. Uh, <clears throat> Here we have Spidey and the Torch together. And Spidey makes four. 
I'm not going to check to see which issue this came from because this does look like an earlier, earlier than the 80s, uh, perhaps 70s. And look at this henchman right here. He looks an awful lot like Vincent Price. Same mouth, same eyes, everything. Even down to the goatee. <clears throat> so I can only imagine that this was from a 1960s issue. And again, another early issue. Spider-Man. <clears throat> Back when he was in high school against the Green Goblin. Very cool. And on the inside back cover, you have an ad for Marvel Masterpieces, October 1994. I loved the 90s. They had all these awesome trading cards. And I, I really wish they would bring back these trading cards. I'm, I'm sure there's a market out there for them now. Uh, they were just, in the 90s, people got too overwhelmed by them. There were so many different trading cards coming out. I think now there could be a new market for trading cards. Especially Flair and Flair Ultra. Those were awesome. But I got this off eBay in a uh, lot. As you can see, there's some damage, but not much. And I mean, they're not really worth anything anyway, since they're all reprints. Now let's take a look at issue number three. <clears throat> Here we have Spider-Man Magazine number three from December of 1994. 96 big pages. Uh, it originally priced at $2.95 in the U.S., $4 in Canada. In this issue, nothing can stop the juggernaut, the fiery human torch, Morbius the living vampire, the sinister Sandman. Ooh, here we have an issue with Madam Web. Pretty cool. Have an ad for Top Gear 3000 on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. There we have Spider-Man going up against the Juggernaut and Madam Web over here. I'm certain I once heard Doctor Strange mention Sidorak. Maybe he can shed some light on the Juggernaut. While Spider-Man skitters away, Madam Web tries to physically locate the two famed fighting teams, the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, and discovers that neither can be reached. Pretty cool. And there's Black Tom Cassidy there. He and Juggernaut were a team for quite a while back in the day. There we have J. Jonah Jameson. We got the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, Daredevil, uh, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Craven the Hunter, and the Vulture. Illustrated by Steve Ditko, lettered by Sam Rosen. Like I said, I, I'm not really a big fan of the early styles, but I can appreciate them. I can appreciate Steve Ditko's art style uh, and Jack Kirby and whatnot, but I'm not a huge fan of them. I know it's blasphemy to say that, but it is what it is. On the back cover, Power, Justice, Darkness, Light. Two halves of an ancient puzzle are the only hope. Double Dragon, coming soon to a theater near you. And you know, I may be in the minority here, but I actually enjoyed the Double Dragon movie. Uh, I believe you can currently find it on Amazon Prime. Um, and I actually, I really enjoyed the animated series as well, which you can find on Tubi.
Here we have Spider-Man Magazine number four from January of 1995. In this issue, the Slytherin Cobra, the brutish Mr. Hyde, the original X-Men, Morbius the Living Vampire, Sandman and the Enforcers, the blazing Human Torch. I'm seeing a pattern here. It seems that the Human Torch is in just about every issue of this. I don't think Spider-Man and his amazing friends were being broadcast at this time. I do know it was an earlier series, but I don't know if repeats were still being shown at that time. So, but maybe, um, I do think the Fantastic Four uh, Marvel Action Hour was being broadcast at this time, which for those of you who don't remember, the Marvel Action Hour was Iron Man the Animated Series and Fantastic Four the Animated Series on Fox Kids. Um, it would air on Saturday mornings. And I do think it might have been broadcast at this time. So maybe they were pushing Human Torch and Fantastic Four related uh, stories in with Spider-Man to kind of promote their comic sales as well. On the inside cover, it's like totally alien man, Top Gear 3000 Superman, Super Nintendo Entertainment System game. The Amazing Spider-Man Caught in the Act. Uh, the art uh, reprint editor Tom Brevort, editor-in-chief Tom DeFalco. Uh, original scripter was Roger Stern, artist John Romita Jr. and Jim Mooney, letterer Joe Rosen, colorist Bob Sharon, editor Tom DeFalco, precinct captain Jim Shooter. See, the art style I I grew up on, that I really love, was the art style of the Clone Saga. Uh, as well as, um, I think the Spider-Man art style in his Onslaught uh, comics was alright. It wasn't the same as the Clone Saga. The uh, Clone Saga was the best interpretation, artistically, of Spider-Man, in my opinion. Now, others may have their own opinions on that. But to me, that's the best artistic interpretation. Spidey and the X-Men together. There you see Michael Morbius. Spider-Man comes in swinging. Uh, and he and the X-Men get into it. And on the back cover, we're happy to announce that Cookie Crisp now contains spiders, vultures, scorpions, octopus. Shouldn't that be octopi? <laughs> and more. Get a free Spider-Man animated series trading card in specially marked boxes of Cookie Crisp. These exclusive cards feature animated stills, artwork, gold foil stamping, and high gloss UV coating. Now it's even harder to resist the little cookies you can't resist. Collect all six. And you know, I think I did end up collecting all six. Maybe the only one I didn't get was the Vulture one. There we have another ad for the Double Dragon. And here we have issue number five from February of 1995. In this issue, the terrifying tarantula, the mysterious Willow the Wisp, the ethereal vision, puppet master, and his deadly monstroid, and the sin sinister scorpion. I believe each of these issues came about during the, uh, well, I don't want to say they came about. The original printing of the stories with Scorpion, Sandman, and whatnot was during their time in the Sinister Six, which is why each of them say the sinister so-and-so. Um, as you can see, if you remember the Sinister Sandman, the Sinister Scorpion. And on the inside cover, Fold for the Gold. Discover Lucky's special new two-color marshmallow shape. Fold the page so that the arrows look for them in specially marked boxes of Lucky Charms. This was back when... <laughs> 
they didn't care about depreciating value of comics. <laughs> they actually pushed kids to fold the pages. Where the is Nose Norton? See, now that's good artistic style there of J. Jonah Jameson. All right. Script, the original scripter was Roger Stern. Uh, John Romita Jr. and Jim Mooney were the artists. Diana Albers were, was the letter. Glennis Wayne was the colorist. Tom DeFalco, editor. Jim Shooter, lost and found. That they, they were getting to the early 90s style at this time. When was the original print on this? Uh, it does not say... Hmm. I'm willing to bet it was in the 80s, though. There we have the tarantula. Willow the Wisp. Uh, what a name, Willow the Wisp. <laughs> what a mouthful. I'm sure there were some jokes made by Spider-Man during that time, uh, making fun of his name. <laughs> Hey, Willow. <laughs> and we got the tarantula again. The vision. Vision was a big part of the Iron Man animated series at the time. Um, I, I want to say, no, no, that wasn't vision. Uh, what was his name? Um, I forget his name. He was kind of that series version of Vision, even though I do believe he was an actual hero. Um, oh, I can't, he had white, long white hair, um, but he did act as kind of a Vision type character for Iron Man, the animated series. Uh, Evil shines darkest before the dawn, Shining Force 2 on the Sega Genesis and Game Gear. And then once again, an ad for Cookie Crisp Chocolate Chip Artificial Flavor Brand Multi-Grain Sweetened Cereal. So there you have it, guys. Issues 2 through 5 <laughs> of Spider-Man Magazine from 1994 and 1995. If you have a chance, pick these up. Uh, pretty interesting comics. Um, like I said, there's no real new, brand new stories in them or anything. They are all reprints, but if you want to read those stories and you have the original issues and but don't want to grease them all up with your fingers or risk tearing them, pick up Spider-Man Magazine. Uh, I love the art style on the covers. And then... My favorite was this one right here. The cover just looks amazing. I love how they really updated the look. So anyway, there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give us a like, subscribe, and share. I've been Shannon. This is Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks. <laughs>